week, maybe. Well, we start our spring workouts in a week. So I got to go back and then I'll be back here uh, next Friday or next Thursday. Okay. Okay. You, you know what we are? We already recording, just so you know. Let's get it, man. Yeah, we, no, we already recording. I just like to do this because, like, it's, sometimes it's, it's, it's conversations that we have right now that it may be like, okay, this is good, like, fluff talk before we actually get started. So, now nah, it's all good. Um, hey, man, what you, what, right now, what you watching? Like, if what, what you watching on TV? Like, your go-to shows and stuff like that. My go-to show every time is Family Guy. I'm not going to lie. It's a comfort show. Okay, okay. Talk to me now. Okay, so just elaborate on it a little bit. Like, because, you know, uh, like a lot of people, the reason why I'm asking that, though, because a lot of people will say right now, they'll say, like, uh, power and yeah, all nah. of that. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Nah, I choose Family Guy because when I was younger, me and my grandma used to watch it. So, you know, me and it's still, like, me and her still talk about it today about how it used to be our favorite show. So that's always a comfort. So I turn that shit, Family Guy on for background noise i won't even watch it sometimes i and i was just i'll I be telling people like if my say my sound when my tv broke if i'm watching family guy i know what's going on because i've seen every episode every that's crazy bro and uh stewie and uh and uh make sure you like this Izzy. video and subscribe yeah, my favorite brian, character. brian funny too man brian super funny too um, you know, one of my favorite episodes of Family Guy, and I don't watch it as faithfully as you do, of course, but one of my favorite episodes was when uh, Brian owes Stewie some money. The, and, what? And, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he was hiding from him, and he was hiding from him to pay him, and then uh, Brian was starting to walk around with, like, disguises on with mustaches yeah. and shit. <laughs> that's, that's the best episodes on there, for real. Man, that was so funny, man. That was super funny. Um, How you doing, bro? You good? Yeah, I'm I'm good, man. You know, I mean, I'm just I just, I'm good always. Always gonna be good. Right, right, right. Just even even given whatever circumstances, you're gonna be good. Um, listen, man, I have to do something really quick because today I was honored and I was blessed enough to, um, to meet with some people, and I need to. I got an announcement that I need to make. Um, everybody that's looking at the screen right now, from here on out. Baseline to goal line, I am humble to say this is dope. It's a crazy experience. It's, um, I never thought that I was going to be able to be in this position because I'm look. what I do this for is for fun and it's a hobby. But it was I was thankful enough today to get an endorsement deal with this company that you see here on TV, on, on, TV, on the um, computer screen, Hilux Vitamin Water. Now, what Hilux Vitamin Water is, is similar to if you're familiar with um, Body Armor, you're familiar with a lot of the different body, uh, the, the vitamin waters, is very similar to vitamin water. Um, so, from here on out, Baseline to Go Line will be sponsored by Hilux Vitamin Water, okay? And what Hilux Vitamin Water is, it is a, hyd a hydration regimented vitamin water. Um, it's four different electrolytes, B-complex vitamins, antioxidants, more potassium than a banana, and no artificial ingredients at all. So what's going to end up happening is we're in the process right now of getting my discount code established. And when you go to drinkhilux.com, you see the website right here, you can check out using my, um, my code, which is being created right now, and I will be providing that for you guys you will be able to get a discount using Hilux Vitamin Water. If everybody that's been watching the show, y'all know before we do the show normally, when I have um, older people on the show, we do a toast and we toast to what you, whatever we're sipping on. Hilux is going to be one of the things that I will be drinking on moving forward. Um, but I will also have my adult beverage, but Hilux will be what I'm going to be chasing everything with. Um, I wouldn't be endorsing a product that I didn't uh, approve. And I had a chance to try this for the first time back in January. Shout out to Mark Harris and shout out to Ke Kelly Winfrey. They both, Mark Harris, the co-host that used to do the show with me, he actually sent me a case of it. Um, and Kelly Winfrey, who is the big partner with this particular company, reached out to me today and wanted to do a partnership. So it, it wouldn't be anything that I wouldn't endorse I am a fan of Hilux, 
And I am humbled to say that moving forward, I have a sponsor with Hilux and for the Baseline to Go Line uh, podcast show. So um, thank you, uh, Cam. I noticed your interview, and I, but I just needed to get that out. Thank you for letting me get a, to, to, to say that. Um, and thank you for everybody over at Hilux um, for, for giving me the opportunity to, to humbly endorse your product. I really appreciate it for sure. Um, but the reason why we're here, if you see this young man in front of me, let me go ahead and introduce this young gentleman in front of me right now. New viewers, welcome. Returning viewers, welcome back to Baseline the Goal Line. I am your humble and gracious host, Alan Colbeezy Colburn, and in the building with me right now, high school state champion at, at uh, St. Catharines here in Racine, Horizon League all-freshman team, University of Green Bay starting point guard, Kamari Cam, Killer Cam, let's say that, we, we ain't gonna even just say Cam, we gonna give you your whole thing. Kamari, Killer Cam McGee is in the building. What's up, bro? That's that's hey man, listen. Um, first of all, man, uh, thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. That's first and foremost. Number two, bro. I I, I said this to you off camera. I said this to your parents, um, both your mom and your dad. It is so good to see someone in your position and someone as young as you. Bro, I, I really think that you are a better person than you are a basketball player, like a human being. And that's saying a lot because you are a phenomenal basketball player. But for you to be a better human being than what you are as a basketball player, that is a testament to your mom. That is a testament to your, your, your surroundings, um, not just your mom, but, you know, everybody else that's surrounding with your mom. But then your father, an extension of your family in general, bro, I just want to commend you on being a better human being than you are a basketball player. Uh, I appreciate that. I really do. No, nah, no problem, man. No problem. Um, where does that, where does the humility before we even get into everything, where does that come from? Who, who actually instilled that into you? Just like you said, the people around me, I wouldn't say it was just one specific person, you know, it was my mom, my dad, grandma, aunts, you know, just my family. Um, it really helped mold me into into the man I am today. So I gotta give all the thanks to them. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, if if I can give you, and I'm pretty sure you don't need this because I'm pretty sure they're in your ear telling you the same exact thing. Um, bro, don't ever change who you are as a person. Because, you know, you're gonna have people who are gonna treat you certain ways because of the stature that you're gonna end up getting, because it's coming, number one. But then you're gonna have people who are who are um that you may fall off with, fall out with, or whatever the situation is. Don't still stay true to who you are at the core because, bro, listen, and this ain't no, oh no, like, you got a, a, a dope soul, bro. Like, you, you're a real good dude, man. You're a really good dude. So please just stay, yeah, please stay, please stay the same person that you currently are, bro, for sure. Always. Always. Okay, so, bro, listen. So, you know why we here, man. We are here to talk about up till now, and I'm just going to say up till now because you still have so much more to go and you still have further to go when it comes to this basketball thing, your illustrious career up to this point. So I just want to start from the beginning and to the current point that we are right now. What got you into basketball? What made you say, okay, um, do you remember the, 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 the time frame that, that you were like, okay, I want to, this is something that I want to do. What, what initially drew you into basketball? Um, well, growing up, when I was little, I started playing basketball at the age of three. So I just had the little, you know, the little mini hoops, and I would always have fun with them. I remember I used to try to jump off the back of the couch just to dunk when the hoop was on the highest level. So, it, you know, it started at a young age, and then it never really, it never stopped, honestly. You know, at, at that young age of three, I knew that I wanted to play basketball because I had a ball in my hand. At the age of three. Okay, so when did you when did you start playing um, competitively? Granted, you know we talking competitively as as a young age. So 
I'm not sure if it was, you know, if it was Optimus, if it was whatever the situation. When did you really start playing competitively? To, competitively? Like, what age were you um, in? Like that. I want to say, like, six or seven. I, so I was playing at the Y, doing the little Y leagues, and then, and then Optimus was right after that. So around there, like, six or seven, when I really, really started playing competitively. And, and it's been going good for me ever since. Do you remember the time frame when you said, okay, um, I, I'm seeing what I am doing, and in comparison to the people, your peers that you were playing with at the time, I'm a little bit better than these dudes. And I, and, I'm, and, I, and I know that I can take this basketball thing to a different type of level. Like, what age did you realize that? I realized that... I realized that when I got a little older. So I want to say, mm, that's a good question. I want to maybe my seventh grade year. Just maybe playing, your seventh grade? Okay. Yeah, just playing um, against the other competition, like the, because I, I went to St. Cass Middle School too. So just playing against everybody, I realized, and even AAU, I just realized that I, I could be taking it to that next level. And okay. other people could. That, that's interesting because I didn't know, of course, I, you know, I, I, I gained to know about, you know, of course, everybody knows around here, knew that you ended up going to St. Casper High School. But it's interesting because I didn't know about St. Casper Middle School. So you ended up playing for St. Cats in middle school as well, huh? Well, real quick, before we even get into the, before, what got you into the private school? Like, what, what, what was the reason why you got steered down that road for private school? Um, private school, it was just less distractions. Honestly, okay. it just, I, I was able to just, to just hoop and not really focus on, worry about what none else going around me really, even though, I mean, stuff going to happen. It's going to be stuff going on at any school, but I was really able to just, just hoop and, and focus on school. And I knew St. Cass had a history of winning. So why not go and, and add to that? So it was your decision? Uh, mine, my parents, it was, it was mutual. And I'm not talking about just for high school. I'm talking about even for like the middle school portion of everything. Because, I, okay, I see a lot of people who eventually end up going to these private schools um, when high school comes around. But I'm more so speaking of like middle what school. got you into it for middle school. Like, do you remember? Um, um, at the time, the coach I was playing AAU for, worked there who which was who uh ryan thompson okay so he had worked there and and we were playing for him at, at, at that time um before i ended up going there and I, um so half of well majority of our aau team ended up going there that's where my friends was at even for middle school yeah oh wow so let's 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 talk about that i'm, gl I'm glad that you mentioned that it's actually a perfect segue to what i wanted to get into um because you know, you, you oftentimes you will have people for for um, for AAU, you know, those are childhood friends. Those are friends and stuff, you know, people that they grow up with and things like that. So you mean you telling me that the majority of your St. Cat's um, team, even for high school, were AAU teammates? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. That's why we gelled together so good because we had been playing with each other for years. And even after that team, the next AAU team we was on, it was all of us. Our whole starting five played with each other. And what team was that for your AAU team um, after after that one? The first, So the first team was Wisconsin Elite. And then the second team was uh, Butler, Karan Butler Elite. Okay. Who, who was – give me some of the names of, of the people that were on your team during those times. Um, you got – me, you got Tyrese, you got uh Calvin, Jameer, um, Marcel, like Tyrese Hunter, Calvin, Hunter, Calvin Hunter, Jameer Barker, Marcel Tyler, you got Victavia Thomas, just to name a few of the people that was on that team. You know, um, real solid dudes. You know, they're my ten plus year brothers. So right, we sure. uh, we all jail together. And we knew that if we would stick together to our high school, that we could make some noise, and we did. So, okay, so, because at some point in time, you ended up um, 
and we'll get to this down the road, but I just want to put, put things in perspective as to where the next place I want to go. But at some place, point in time, you ended up ultimately playing AAU for Playground, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll get there. We'll get there in a second. But this is because some of those some of those players, I shouldn't even say some. A lot of those players that you just mentioned that was on your previous AAU team with Wisconsin Elite and Karan Butler Elite, they didn't play with you with Playground, correct? Nope. We okay. all ended up ways. Okay, so yeah, we'll get there for sure. Okay, so so growing up, seventh grade at um, St. Cat's Middle School and then for AAU, you guys are pretty much one unit, not only just for AAU, but also through school, for school as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did you, how did y'all play as far as school? Was y'all just like killing the competition when it came to school basketball? In middle, during the middle school? Yeah, during middle school, yeah. So, they had to split the teams up. It was two different teams because that wouldn't have been fair. Okay, so let's <laughs> talk about it. Okay, yeah, let's talk so, about it. My team, it was it was me, it was Tyrese Hunter, uh, Jameer Barker, and my friend Demarion Cobb. And then okay. it was a few other guys, but we were like the, the core of the team. So it had to split us up, but even, even then, that team alone, dom like we dominated. Okay, like, so the when they split, parents were mad because they knew that we all played AAU together. So like they, uh, they didn't. Like but how, how? Why not? I mean, the funny because the funny thing is, you think about it, like all these feeder programs around the area anyway. That's how those basketball teams, especially high school and things like that. That's how they are established is through the AAU circuit. Exactly. Like those. Those parents, they their their kids were just playing, just to play, not knowing that okay. we actually this is what we really love to do. So really they they it. look different. So when you said that they split the teams up, it was a what was it like a St. Cat's Middle School A team and then a St. Cat's Middle School B team? Yeah, it was it was a black and a white team. Okay, and so y'all ended up the people that you just mentioned was on one team. Do you know the the people who were on the other team? Uh, my guy Calvin Hunter, mm -hmm. Octavian Thomas, um, my friend Keon Johnson. He moved to South Carolina, but when he was here, he played. Mm -hmm. And then I forget who else they had. So they they split them up. To, and what's crazy is Tyrese Hunter. He wasn't. He didn't start seventh grade year. Like he came second semester. So they he ended up joining our team midway mm -hmm. through the year. So we okay. we went from just having three really good players to having four. Okay. And so it was always trouble when we the other the other team did not like us because it was always we was always bad. It was always bad. Now do you let me ask you this. Do you think they intentionally did that to put all of y'all stacked on one team and then the other team not as good? Nah. It wasn't intentional. Uh it they it wasn't intentional. Uh me and Tyrese we always been real close. So they just they I um and our coach, he knew that, so um, we made it work to get Tyrese with us. Got you. Got you. Okay, so listen, so how did you guys fare on the AAU circuit, though, before before you even ended up getting into, like, your your, your freshman, I mean, your high school season? How did you guys fare on the AAU circuit middle, middle school-wise? Uh, we, were, we were a pretty solid team, honestly. We, um... We were a pretty solid team. It's a, it's kind of, it's been a while since I even thought about the memories, but um, yeah, we were pretty good though. You know, we won, we won a few championships. I want to say like two maybe, and um, it was just, I don't know, it was just fun to always being able to play with my brothers. Were y'all? So was it more? You know, because now you have all these AAU squads, and, and I'm pretty sure you, you actually saw this when you ended up going to uh, with, with playground. You have these play these uh, AU squads that are pretty that are on the circuit heavy, right? So during that time frame when you guys were playing for Wisconsin Elite, I'm sorry, and Karan Butler Elite, were you more so just staying locally, or were you going to national tournaments as well? Oh, we was going to national tournaments as well. Right. That's what. Okay. So now that yeah. we have that established, I'm sorry, you still, but you said that you guys still were fair, were fair and well in those national tournaments too. Sure. Okay. So, yeah. For so they knew we had dogs. It don't matter where we came. <coughs> Wisconsin Elite, we went to uh, 
Virginia. We did solid out there with Butler Elite. We went to um where we go, San Diego. We did solid out there. So like even though teams everybody knew that we were still feared and and with our name hell weight. Definitely. Okay, so now now we get into your you know, I want to move into like your freshman year in high school. We get to your freshman year in high school, right? You and same cats with your fresh at your freshman year in high school. You got some of the same players that are on your that was on your AAU team with Karan Butler Elite, Wisconsin Elite on your um high school um your freshman year in high school. How how were you guys re- accepted from the upperclassmen when you came in as freshmen? And did you guys start right away? Um so the only two people who really, really played a lot or played or bumped up to varsity freshman year was me and Tyrese Hunt. Okay. So um we didn't start well, we didn't start the first game. We didn't but we both had good games. That like so so the upperclassmen they respected us because they seen us like that. We are the whole school is one, so they seen us hoop before, so they already know. But um I didn't start at all freshman year. I start I maybe I started a few games because our other point guard, I think he had got hurt, so I started a few, but I didn't really play much my freshman year. Okay. Tyrese Hunters, he started um the second game of the season and then never lost his starting spot. So he was he was a starter for sure. But I, okay. I ain't, my freshman year, I ain't really played much. So what did that do for your – because now you're seeing, you know, a fellow freshman that you played AAU with, he's coming in and he's starting right away, right? And you pretty much kind of relegated to, the, to, 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 to riding the bench and not even playing that much. Two questions. One, did that do anything for your confidence? Um in either good or bad, but then number two, what did you do that summer to lock in and say, okay, listen, I know next year I need to do this because I want to be able to be on the floor come my sophomore season. Um. So for my account, for the first question, it didn't, it didn't really do anything to my confidence. I mean, I just, he was just producing more than I was. So I was like, at the end of the day, I was my brother. So I was happy for him. And I'm sorry, let me rephrase that real quick because I didn't want to make it seem like I was pitting you two together. What I was Uh, just talking about was, yeah, but just for the people that's listening and stuff like that, I'm just talking about in general, like not even necessarily saying, okay, dang, I should be playing over Tyrese, but y'all eventually ended up playing the backcourt together. Exactly. So that's more so like, damn, I need to do something to beat out this next person, this person that's taking my, this point guard that's taking my position even for the next year or whoever they got coming in the next year. That's what I meant more so than yeah. anything. No, else. yeah, I got that. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, so, you know, and then as far as that summer, I just made sure I was getting all the extra work I could get, just making sure that – um, because really defense is what got me on the court. Okay. I wasn't I wasn't looked at as a scorer right away. So, my freshman and sophomore year, I was the defender. Like, I was going to lock you up. And then if it came time, if I needed to score, I'd go get a bucket. But – I always right. looked at defense, so it was what I could do on the defensive end. So, and that was both your freshman and sophomore season. Sophomore season, I started, but I was still known as the defender. That's what I meant. Yep. Okay, so you're still more mm-hmm. known more as the defender your sophomore season than than your um, than anything else. You were still okay. So, you ended up starting your sophomore season. Um, you started every single game your sophomore season. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> no man, we ain't doing. Listen, we ain't doing no light brags, bro. Yeah, if you want to, bra- yeah, we gonna we gonna say yeah with, with our chest out and everything else. So yeah, so you started every single game your sophomore season. How do you think you fared your sophomore season? I feel Especially like, like as, a, as as a as a first time starter, you playing against grown men, juniors and seniors. Now, how do you think you fared? I fared really well. I held my own on the court because mm-hmm. at, at that point. My confidence just continued to keep growing and keep growing. So you know, as a as a year when as that season went on, I just continued to just just take my game to another level. And was that was was that also in relation to the work that you put in that summer? And who did you play at and at that point in time going into your sophomore season? And I forgot to mention ask this question a couple seconds seconds ago, but were you still playing with 
Butler Elite, the Wisconsin Shooters, or had this time had you gone on to Playground? I didn't get to Playground until last year. I only played Playground for one year. Got it. Okay, so you're still playing AAU with the previous people that you played AAU with then? No, nah, I was on a team called the Sharks then. Okay, let's talk about it. Um, Yeah, so we had all split up. Okay. Freshman year, going in high school, Karan didn't have a team no more, so we had split. So I went and played with this team called the Wisconsin Sharks with um, a couple of friends from uh, Prairie High School. So I went and played with them for a little bit just because I ain't really have no – I ain't had nowhere else to go. Okay. So, but I was – I played with them for a good good two years, two AAU seasons. Okay. But even then – um. I was a dog. AAU was always my favorite time of the year. Like I, my freshman and sophomore year, I loved AAU more than I liked the high school basketball. Just cause I at AAU, I just I don't know. I was a different type of animal them two, them freshman and sophomore years. Okay. Cause okay. like the game, game in AAU is just faster. It's, it's played different. So I, it, I just loved AAU. Mm, okay. So so going into now we're 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 at your um going into like your 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 junior your junior season now. Yeah, we're going into your junior season now. And this is the year, and we'll get to here too. This is the year that you guys did really, really well, but you didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to play for state that year because of the COVID, because of the COVID mm -hmm. and everything, right? Okay. So how did you how did you do your um and I'm have you okay, so at this point in time going into your junior season, have you started receiving any interest from any colleges or anything at this time? Um, I started to receive a little bit of interest. It wasn't nothing too too heavy, but I definitely definitely did start hearing from coaches a little bit. Do, can you do you remember the uh the coaches that there were? Um I remember I was hearing from uh South Dakota State. Okay. From them uh at the time I was hearing from Miami of Ohio. Mm, I want to say I had heard a little bit from UIC, but it wasn't nothing too crazy. Like those, those are the three main schools that I really can remember. And it was, was it was they were they offering or were they just more interested at this point in time? Just interested. I didn't get an offer till my uh, senior year, the summer going into my senior year. Okay, we'll definitely get to there too. Okay, so junior season for you is this your breakout season? Your junior season? Um, yes. Okay. So, because I, I previously mentioned that how well y'all did as a group and, you know, this, you could have been a back-to-back -back state champion had y'all, had y'all been able to play, but individually, um, what did you average your junior season and did you receive any, um, awards your junior season? Um, I want to say I, I averaged at least, it was around 11 points a game. I know my um, I had a crazy assist to turnover ratio. It was like it was like ninety six assists to seventeen turnovers. So that's a oh, that's a season? yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. That's yeah, that's a, crazy. I'll stick with me. That's less than one. That's, that's less than one turnover a game. Yeah, I was not turning them, and I averaged at least three assists. Wow. Okay. So yeah, like I had a my junior year, my stats were pr pretty good. Like I didn't really score much, but uh, everything else, like defensively, pa uh, passing, whatever it may be, I had a pretty solid year. My junior year was real good, and we were undefeated that year, so it just made it even better. So what happened? I mean, how did you guys find out about you not being able to uh, to play the state tournament that year? How did y'all find out? Uh, we had just we had just won a game in the playoffs, a good game. We had just won, um, so we 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 celebrate. Uh, we get out the locker room. We, we wait that next day, and then um, I had seen it on social media at first. Said that they was canceling it, and then they have, and we had put they put it in our group chat. So then we had met up at the school that next day as a team. And what's crazy is my my high school coach, Nick Bennett, is related to Tony Bennett, the Virginia coach. 
So my coach had him on the phone and he was just talking to all of us, you know, telling us we had a good year and just congratulating the seniors, even though they didn't get to, we didn't get to go upstate. So, you know, it was a lot of mixed emotions that day because we knew we weren't going to be able to go. And we all knew that. Oh, so you guys knew it was a possibility of the virus stopping you guys from actually going upstate. Yeah. Cause, cause that game, that game, the game before we got shut down, it was already like we already had limited fans. Mm. They was already cutting the fans down. So mm. we we had, we had we had no. Did you um did you guys know at that point in time also or did you know because I'm assuming AAU was shut down too that year then. Uh yes no AAU. Wow. So everything was just pretty much at, at a standstill for you. So what did you do to keep yourself ready for this for the senior season then? Um my friend, my friend Demarion Cobb, his dad knew some guy with a gym. So I stayed like me and my friend. I was lifting. I lifted a lot uh over that time. And then that's when you bulked up a little bit, right? That's when yeah, you got a little bit. That's when I bulked yeah. up, got big a little bit. I was yeah, yeah. Lifting, and my friend, because my friend played football. So you know, I was like, we was lifting for real. Okay. Okay. So, and I would try to find um I could I still was able to kind of find gyms. I would go outside and, and shoot a lot before they took the rims down. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, you know, because I, they did that too for people yeah. not to be. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I okay. Was finding ways to uh to get into gyms and that during that time it wasn't easy, but we I made it work. Wow. About that couple technical difficulties, but we back. Um, so I was asking about the COVID thing. We was talking about COVID, how it interrupted your junior season. So. Was it uncertainty then going into your senior season as to even if y'all was gonna have a season at all? Yeah, it, it it took a little minute for us to actually realize if we were gonna have a season or not. Um, so we were a little nervous, a little scared that we weren't. But they said that we had to play with the mask masks on, so that was real tough. And and a lot of people don't know that. We weren't a lot. We didn't get to play any home games. We didn't get to practice in our gym that whole year. Really? What? So where was y'all playing home games? Uh, it was home games. It, it was this little. It was a little spot out like way out in Six Mile called Gallo, where we had a, a few home. Like when we played Racine Lutheran, we had to play there because they couldn't play at their gym either. So like it was a, or we just would go to, we would play two games at, at wherever we was going. Like we would play, we played two games at Prairie, one where we would wear our black jer away jerseys, the next one we would wear our home jerseys. Two games in one day? Not two games in one day. Oh, no. I was about to say okay, so like a home but and home. Yeah, yeah. So we would just have to play at at them gyms twice a year. Got you, got you. Speaking of which, man, so. Before we get into your senior season, or while we're talking about your senior season, um, I also want to to big you up and to do this real quick. Can you see this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So some of your highlights, man. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk to these highlights real quick. So is this what you were referring to, like with the with the mask and y'all was playing a home and home kind of, right? Yeah. But this had to be, yeah, this was playground. Look at, yeah. Yeah, you bulked up a lot, bro. Oh, for sure. So. Oh, for sure. So. I missed number three. Yeah, we spoke about that. You ain't gonna punch nothing? Oh, okay. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> we, gonna take, we just gonna take our two points and keep going. Yeah, for sure. What was this at? That was the state championship game. 
That was the actual state championship game. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What did y'all play? The state tournament. In Oshkosh. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I actually watched that game. I was at the gym watching that game. Yeah, we was at the Oshkosh. Good kick, Tyrese. Okay. <laughs> You know, that's money. That duo, ain't, ain't nobody like that duo. Okay. How was it playing with the mask on, uh, Cam? Horrible. Was it really? I mean, it was hard to breathe, and you had sometimes you would have refs who will always want you to pull it up over your nose, like so. It was yeah. it was real hard. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Them pro steps. Yeah, I got you, bro. So these these some of your uh, your senior highlights. How did you like playing with playground as opposed to um, the team that you got actually kind of like thrown together with when you guys split the first time? You said how did I play playing with them? Yeah, with playground. Um, it was fun playing with them. You know, you got to I got to form like new new friendships, new uh, new I got to meet new brothers. So you know, it, it was actually fun playing with them. Okay. Is it what is, is this summer league right here? Uh, that that was like the, this little. We got three games before the high school season started, so we were always it was like a little tournament basically. We oh, okay. Gotcha. That's Prairie, right? Or, yeah. Yeah, Prairie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave Prairie buckets. Give me that. Left hand. Slay. Oh, you don't see. Oh, you don't see these plenty of times then. Oh, I, I live. Yeah, you know what's going on. I live them. Yeah, this was dope, bro. And it's kind of like it's so crazy because it's kind of vindication for for what happened the year before when you couldn't play. Who you saluting right there? You remember who you saluting? Uh, my whole my whole family. They was all sitting together. Yeah, the fam they was all in one little spot. I I knew where I before each game I find where my people's at, so I know where to look. Got you, got you. For like comfort, right? More like comfort mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, got you. you know that. So, as you saw, we, this was your senior season. So you know we we know that you capitalized everything off with a state championship your senior season, which is dope, man. Congratulations. Matter of fact, where's that state ring at, bro? You know yeah. it's in. Oh, it's in the in the in the game. You know, we got a yeah. nice nice little case, but like it. Got the ring, man. Okay. On the side, on one side, it's say twenty eight and one. This from our senior season. We only lost one game that year. Okay. Who y'all lose to? Uh, Martin Luther. Oh, okay. In overtime. Okay. And then on the other side, it's got our our uh, junior year on there, the undefeated. Tough. So yeah, this this real special. That's tough. That's tough. Is it? Where's your? Is your um your name and stuff? Or is it engraved in the in the middle? My name, is, my last name is on the side right here. It's a it's a McGee. Okay, I the, see it. Undefeated side. Yep. Yeah, this my this my baby right here. That's dope, bro. That's dope. Um. So you ended up. Finishing up with a with a with a stellar senior season, you ended up. Um, so at this point in time, so your senior season is, season is over with. Where are you getting interest from at this point in time? So, I started all my interest started to come that that um, summer, going into senior. So when in them videos when you see me playing with the playground with playground, that's yeah. when I started on my interest. Okay. So I had a few offers during during them games, and then they did they started. I had so my first offer was Grambling State. Okay. I got they offered me. I was crazy as I had just got done working out, and they offered. 
So that was the first one. And then I had ended up getting, so I had Grambling, I had South Dakota State, I had Colgate University, the University of St. Thomas, um, Green Bay, and Western Illinois. University of St. Thomas, the the island St. Thomas? No, nah, that's it's it's in Minnesota. Oh, okay. I was about to they say were, what? they were a D three school that made the jump to D one. Mm. So, yeah, okay. that, it was a pretty solid, solid, solid school. Okay, but, uh, I got one more thing I want to show you before we actually jump into your uh, why you went and why why you ultimately chose Green Bay. I got something else I want to show you. Okay. And this time I'm actually gonna have the uh, the volume on because I want you to react to this. Kamari McGee recently completed a perfect 25 and 0 season for Racine St. Catharines. This is after and your junior season, of course. In the classroom, Racine St. Catharines season ended without a loss, but not the way they wanted it to with the coronavirus pandemic. Yet next season. A minor setback for a major comeback. For a major comeback. You finished it. Mm. Is that what you're ready for next mm -hmm. year? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we ready. I told, I just like I told um, Eliza, um, since we didn't get to a chance to get it this year, we're gonna get them for next year. If I was standing here, you oh. either run for me or run around me, one way or another next year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you either in the way or you out the way. You better pick, and you pick and choose. McGee holds a sparkling four grade point average. Yeah, I've always had that my smarts would help me. Like That's why I kept my grades up, because I know that like if basketball don't work out, which I hope it, it I plan for it too, mm -hmm. but I will always be able to go to any school I want because of my grades. It trickles down to everybody else. When you have a team leader that practices as hard as anyone, who is positive as anyone, who works as hard as anyone in the classroom, it trickles down to others. Is it a challenge to get A's and play on an undefeated basketball team? It's pretty tough, you know, with all the, the studying and the tests and stuff, and then focusing on basketball, it's kind of tough, but I'm in as well. When you see a kid like Kamari doing everything the right way, you go, well, maybe I should too. No, this we is dope, bro. We 14 guys on honor roll this year. Uh, we are right around a 3.3 GPA team GPA, which is the highest in my time. And it absolutely starts with our leaders, the guys that take school seriously, take practices seriously. Well, gosh, if everyone around me is working hard and the leaders are working hard, I better too. Kamari's best subject might be his most challenging. And my favorite subject is math. I don't really, I don't like it, but like I'm good at it, so I can't really complain. I'm good at it, but I, I don't like it. Like it <laughs> makes my head hurt. McGee would love to go into business and realizes smarts in hoops can be different than his subjects. In school, thinking is good, but like on the court, not really so much. Like just, you just gotta do it. I really don't think on the court. Kamari is a junior, so watch out as the Angels should be one of the top teams in the- Bro, that's dope, man. Um, What's but, crazy, but when, I, when, that, when I said I plan for it, when I was like, I hope that I'm still hooping, uh, my mindset changed as far as that. It's gonna happen. I'm no, we're going to get there. Yeah, we, oh, yeah, we're going to get there for sure. We're definitely going to get to that. That's dope. We're definitely going to get there. Um, so I just wanted to show this again, man, because it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's just a testament, especially to if there's if there are young kids out there watching, too, that you have to get it done both on the basketball, whatever your respective sport is, um, baseball diamond, football field, volleyball court, whatever but also in the classroom as well. You definitely got to get it done in, in both aspects. You can't have one without the other. You definitely can't. Mm -hmm. Got to have both. Got to have both. Um, so you ultimately end up choosing Green Bay. Mm -hmm. What went into that choice? Um, a lot. I mean, well, first it was, it was close to the crib. You know, I got, like, you know, personally, I got my, my, family go crazy so they I know they want to want to come to the game so that was a that was the major part and then me um me getting on the court right away I felt like going there I would be able to play right away so that those were like the two major keys of because I wanted to get on the court right away I wanted gotcha. to be able to show what I can do at the next level to show that 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 I that's where I'm supposed to be okay before we get into Green Bay we definitely this because that's on the that's the next I got a couple of um, rapid fire questions for you, real quick. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, favorite rap artist? Lil Wayne. Okay. Uh, favorite sneaker to wear? Jordans. Specific Jordan, which one? 
Air Jordan Force. Force. Okay. Favorite basketball player. I think we spoke about this, but favorite basketball Kyrie player. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is your favorite basketball player. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um toughest player that you had to guard. Tyree Sarner. Okay. Favorite hangout spot on campus? The gym. Really? I don't hang out on campus. I go to the gym, I go back to my room. That's literally it. Okay, so let me ask you this then. Favorite hobby to do when you're back at your room? Listen to music. Listen to music, cool. No video games, none of that? Uh, I just started playing video games again. So I, I'm getting back into it. I'm getting okay. back into it. What, do, what, what are you playing? I, I'm playing 2K right now. Uh, what system? PS5. PS5, yeah, it's dope. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to send you my gamer tag too on the they PS5. I'll yeah. be on it. I gotta, I gotta send you my gamer tag too. Okay, so you ultimately ended up choosing Green Bay as I previously stated because of your family and all of that stuff. Your that summer going into your um, into your freshman season, did they have you guys show up on campus early? All the freshmen and everything. Everybody, you got summer workouts. Okay. So the whole team there in June. Like June 18th, we were there. Okay, June 18th, you guys show up. What was the feeling and the reception that you were getting from your 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 teammates and stuff? Your friend, like there in June June 18th. What was the feelings that you was getting? Um, they welcomed me honestly because they knew what I can do. They they've seen me. You know, I had I had a, a couple of them reached out. Um, before I even got there, like they know what I could do. They seen what I did in high school. So, you know, they, they welcomed me with open arms and that was very, like, that was greatly appreciated. You know, they didn't look at me like, oh, he's a young dude, none of that. Cause at the end of the day, it don't matter if I'm the young dude, like y'all still got to play, we play me on the court. So I don't matter how old, no matter if I'm the young dude coming out, y'all still got to beat me. Yeah. What was your, what was what was one of the biggest things when you got there in June to make you say like oh shit I'm in college now um, this is a little bit different than what high school is what was that moment that made you say oh this is this um, shit ain't the day? just just how consistent everything was like we didn't really like just lifting as a team every almost every day, having practice every day. Like we ain't do that in high school. Like you would you would go outside and live. You would lift on your own, basically outside of the team. So just just be like having that lift, those lifts, the practice. The our what's crazy is our practices were similar to my high school practices. So that was that. I wasn't no big difference there. But as far as like the lifting, very consistent. That's why I was able to get big because I was starting to lift consistently. Um. Hey, real quick, let me ask you, and I think we took, we spoke about this as well, but I want to just ask this question. You guys are sponsored by, and this this I want to just ask you this before we get into um, your freshman season. You sponsored by mm -hmm. Green Bay, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, not sponsored by Green Bay. It's sponsored by oh. Adidas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can't wear any other sneakers, can you? Not during the season, no. Not like when we traveling and stuff, no. Nah. Okay, so if you're out like on a Friday night, around campus, you can wear a different type of sneaker if you want to? Around campus, I can wear whatever I want. Right, but if you're traveling for basketball purposes, you can only be seen in Adidas. Basically, yes. What would happen, what are the ramifications that would happen if you are caught in some Jordans or something? Um, I honestly don't know, because it didn't, it didn't even happen. Right. But, but, it's, but it's a no-no. You cannot do that, right? Yeah. Well, well, well. when we played Wisconsin, one of one of my teammates uh, had on a pair of Jordans, and I think the coach had just told him uh, to, to just to not do it again. Okay. So, but, but it's safe to say that you're not supposed to be wearing any other type of whatever you – if you're sponsored by Nike, I mean, like, okay, we're just going to use green, uh, Adidas because you sponsored by Green – or Adidas. Adidas – you can't wear anything else while traveling for basketball purposes but Adidas. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I just I just wanted to nip that in the bud because a lot of people thought I was capping when I was telling them, no, it's pre it's like it's for real. If you are sponsored nah. by somebody, yeah, okay. Okay. So now we come into your freshman season. Um your upcoming season. What you didn't start right away, correct? Oh. Nope. 
Okay. Um, but were you holding your own and everything in practice? Very much so. I was, I, I was a dog in practice. It, that's just what it is. I'm always be a dog. It's just, um, I don't know. Early in the season, I was in my head a lot, and I just felt like I just felt like one every little move. Like if I did something wrong, I was just gonna come out. So you know, it was just hard to play like that. Yeah, looking over your shoulder just to see like yeah. you can't you you can't play freely. Okay, so moving forward, then what gave you that confidence to say, okay? I'm not going to look over my shoulder anymore. And then what, at what point did you know that you were going to be starting for the rest of the season? Um, so I, it, I remember the game. It was, we played Kansas city and um, we, we were down and we just couldn't get a bucket. So I was like, I just kind of took, took it over. Cause I okay. knew I could, my own shot. I knew I could go score. So I just was like, all right, let me let me go do my thing. So I it was the second half of the game winding down. I just was killing. I just was in in a in a zone and mode where I like couldn't nobody stand in front of me, no matter who it was. And and then what ended up happening? Coach came to you after their after that game and said for the rest like we you you were in the starting lineup or how did you find I, out that you were going uh, to the starting lineup? The next the next game we put we so that next day, um the point guard our point guard, um, the starting point guard was sick. Okay. So the coach, um, we was crazy. We was going to play Kansas State. The, our next game was Kansas State, Big 12. Mm -hmm. um, the point guard was sick, and the coach was like, he told me, they told me that I was starting. So I was like, all right, cool. Uh, I was like, I felt like I, I earned it to be next up. So I was like, cool. Well, I started that game, solid game against them. I had 14 against them and was if I if I would have stayed consistent that whole game I could that could have easily been a twenty point game I had twelve in the first half and I only scored two in the second half so if I would have been consistent that whole game or stayed in mode I easily would have been a twenty point game against a, a Big Twelve school but besides the point yeah that so that and I think that just them two games alone really because our point guard he so with the with the rules with COVID and stuff you got to miss a certain so like. You got to miss a certain amount of like you got to quarantine basically. Then you got to miss like two more games just so you could get your your ramp up stuff. So I started the next few games and I went on. I was it was a little streak where I, I think it was like five six game streak where I scored in double digits and the games was pretty good like pretty pretty close as far as um what they were before. So you know I feel like just just me having that time on that court and they know like them knowing that I, I can I can actually do it. They right. was just like, okay, he's starting the rest of the year. Even when he came back, uh, they just played us together. They just mm. they put us both together because our point, he was a good, a great passer. My The point starting point, he was a great passer. And me, I was just more of a scoring point guard. Like, I could pass too, but he, like, he, like, he got a few inches on me so he could see, probably see better than I can. But um, he he was a, a heck of a passer, so you know, just me and him in there together was pretty good. And then, like you know, even on the defensive side of the ball, you played pretty well, pretty good defense too. So that probably kept you on the court more than anything else. Um, sure. I just want to run down some of of the of the of the career highs that you've had for you know there at Green Bay. So against Wright State is your career high. You know what it was? Twenty four. Twenty four is your career high. Career high in minutes. Do you know what it is? 40. Against, against who? Oh, UIC. Against UIC. And I, okay. 20 that game. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Career field goals made. You know what your high is? <sighs> nah. No? Your career your career high field goals made is nine against Wright State too. The career high that you shot, uh, the career high that you shot, the most field goals that you shot in the game was 19 against UIC. <laughs> oh, you know that, huh? I, I was nine for 19. Nine for 19. Okay, okay. Career high in rebounds is nine. Career high in assists is four. We got to get those assist numbers up. Career high in steals is four. Oh. You were named all freshmen um, of the, you were named freshman of the week how many times? Three. Three times, yep. Three times freshman of the but week. Three, that's my number. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and th then the season, of course, you know, 
with the success that you had in high school, the season didn't end the way that you would like for it to end um, at Green Bay. What did y'all win that four year, four games that year, last year? Five, Five games last year. Um, what are you going to be working on this summer to better prepare you for your sophomore season? Um, my catch and shoot threes to to start. Just getting up, just getting up a lot of shots, a lot of shots, a lot of shots. Um, and then my um my vision, so I could be a better, a way better passer than I am. Um, well, real quick, I think let me ask, let me let me say something real quick. I think that's gonna come for you, because I don't think I don't think it was more so your vision was was bad. I just think the game was moving so quick because you weren't used to the speed and everything like that. So when everything slows down for you, yeah. I think all of that is going to come. No, and it, and, and, and it got better. The more, when I started to start, the more, I, like, everything got better. It was mm -hmm. just, it was so, like, not late in the season, but it was midway through the season that, like, the first half I wasn't really doing that. Like, the first half of the season I wasn't really doing that. So the second half, if, if I would have, like, if I would have played that how I played the second half of the season, the whole season, the assist numbers would have been way higher, everything. Right. So that, I know that's just going to come with time. But me as a person, I know because I, at times I would get tunnel vision. Like if I'm scoring, gotcha. I'm, I'm, I got tunnel vision. So I got – that's why I said my vision. Like I just went and ran um, on Saturday. And I, that's why I really was working on. I wasn't even really trying to score. I was just passing. And it was crazy. Is I got it. Like I got it. So yeah. 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 It's a okay. matter of um, do you have personal goals that you would like to achieve for your sophomore season? Um, I'm trying to be first team all conference. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make sure that I get my, um, them assist numbers up. That's a personal goal. Cause I, I know for a fact I could pass it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to be more efficient with everything. Cause I'm at high school, that's what I was known for. I was known for being efficient. Like if I had if I had 20 points in high school, I know I was shooting at least 60% or higher. Like I yeah. I would so I just want to make sure that I'm and if that being that efficient player. That's why I like Kyrie so much. That man is efficient. Super efficient for sure. Yeah, so um, that's that's big on me. I like that. I like being efficient. Real quick before I ask you this final question about um, your plans after basketball, that picture, the collage, where's the collage? And I want you to, to explain what this collage is here. All right. So the collage is, I got it as a gift. It's a, it's a collage of just all the newspaper clippings that I was mentioned in or that I'm pictured in. So this first one up here, this is from the state tournament. Mm -hmm. This one after we won state. This one was the game to go up to state. We had won this against MAS. This was a real, real good game. Mm -hmm. um, this one right here, this little clipping right here um, was the game before the season got shut down junior year. Okay. We have won that game. Um, this little clipping at the bottom right here, me and my boy Tyrese. So I signed the day. We signed together. This was. Are y'all signed on the same day? Yeah, we signed on the That's same dope. day. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> this one right here, that was the day. This a like June sixteenth. So this was like that summer going into our senior year. Mm -hmm. uh, we had did a we had did an interview with uh, Peter Jackal at a. a the, right, the Journal Times, mm -hmm. and um, he wanted to interview me and Tyrese as being that background. And this was this was the, on this day called my second offer from Western Illinois. Dope. Dope. They called me. They called me after this and offered me. That's cool. Um, this one was a junior year in the playoffs. Pretty solid game. Fans was in there. This was before, like this was the game. I want to say two games before or maybe one game before everything started to, you know, go down because of COVID. Okay. This was that, that last game before we got shut down. And then this was my sophomore year. I had a good game against Perry. I had 24 points. That was my first 20 point game my sophomore year. Mm. And then this is my favorite picture of all me and my boy Tyrese. 
this was before this was the game before everything got shut down. We was because we knew we had at this point in time we knew and we was going upstate. And oh, everything. and then everything happened. Yeah. Yeah, but this clipping, this clipping, this newspaper clipping was from um me and Tyrese both got AP all state first team. That's dope. I think we I think we was like if not the only like like one of the only teammates, pair of teammates to do that. That's dope. That's dope. Super dope, bro. Um, life, because this is going to happen. At some point in time, the air is going to come out of that ball. We are hoping that it's going to be a long, 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 long time from now that the air is going to come out of there. But what do you want to do after basketball stops? Um... That's a good question. So I'm I'm real I'm a kind of guy, I'm real big on fashion, so I want to be in in some type of field like as far as that because I I like to put outfits together. I like to dress, you know. I like to get dressed, look good. I feel like if you look good, you're gonna feel good. So I'm I'm big on fashion. I feel like I'm gonna go somewhere into that and that like I fashion fashion business something like that. Sure. Whatever it may be, I just. I just know I love like clothes. I love to dress, so gotcha. that's gonna be big for me. What you majoring in? Uh, I think I'm a. I think I'm gonna do business major. I ain't declared yet, but I'm. You haven't declared yet. You just doing general studies now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So business major. Yeah. Um, before we get out of here, do you want to do any shout outs, bro? Man, I just want to shout out to to anybody who's whoever tuned into this. Anybody that support me. Um, my family, friends, close friends, everybody. I just want to shout out to y'all for for being, for supporting along this journey. You know, we just getting started. Like the journey, we not done. We 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 just beginning. It's not, yeah, it's just beginning. This is just like it's, the second chapter. It's just beginning for sure. Yeah, it's just beginning. And 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 I was inspired. I watched the Kanye documentary. I was inspired. So I just I I'm finna shoot my own for real. That's how confident I am in myself. Just like Kanye. So. Dope. It's gonna be we going it's in the works. We're gonna start, we're gonna get it going. Well, listen, man, I, I really appreciate you, bro. I have fun doing this. I learned some stuff, which is always dope. I love doing these interviews because I can fan out, I, I can become a fan um even more, but then I start learning stuff about people. And mm -hmm. as much as I thought I knew about you, I still learned something out of this interview, which is dope. Um once again, I want to shout you out for being the, just a great person. Um I want to shout you out for uh, what you have accomplished right now. Um, and, you know, you, I'm sure you know this, but I want to say it too. It's not going to become any easier than it's going to continue to be hard. But with your work ethic, I think you got it, bro. At some oh. point in time, you are going to be in a situation where you will be able to make money off of playing basketball. It's just as far as how, how bad do you want it, number one. And how far are you willing to go to get it? Mm -hmm. But it's coming. It's definitely coming. Just keep up the work ethic. Keep up the work. And it's definitely coming. Um, I, I again want to shout out your parents for, for raising the type of person that you are. Um, and once again, thank you for giving me an opportunity to uh, to interview you. Um, it was It's greatly appreciated, bro, for sure. Man, no, I appreciate it over here, too. I definitely have fun. You know, I, I like it. I don't talk much, but... It's about basketball. I like to talk. You want to talk about it. Um, thank you all for watching. And before we get out of here, man, I just want to say, make sure that you are taking care of your physical and your mental health. Because mm -hmm. without both of those things, um, and I'm talking to everybody out there. I'm not just pointing. I'm just not talking to, 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 to you, Cam, but to everybody out there. Please make sure you take care of your physical and your mental health because without that, that is the foundation of who you are. And if you don't have your mental and your physical health, you ain't got nothing else, man. And without that, what are you? You get what I'm saying? So please make sure you take care of your mental and your physical health. I want to shout out to everybody who's out there paying attention to the to the Baseline to Go Line show. I appreciate it. I really appreciate all the love that I've been getting. It's been crazy. Um, and 
once again, shout out to Hilux. I, I am very honored that you guys are giving me an opportunity to be endorsed by your product. Um, you will see the product all blasted all over baseline to go line. Um, I get my, my packages here within the next couple of days, all of my cases and stuff. You got something coming, uh, Cam. Don't worry about it. You got some stuff coming. Um, and um, But I, I, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank y'all. Um, thanks for tuning in again to Baseline to Go Line. Cam, thank you for the interview. I really appreciate it. I am Alan Cole Beasy Colburn, the host of Baseline to Go Line. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure, once again, you take care of your mental and your physical well-being. All right? Peace and love. Uh -huh.